In this video, I'm going to show you how I took a company from zero to 100 employees as fast as possible. I will give you the steps on how to do this. And if you stick around to the end, I will tell you the one characteristic to look for and evaluate before you hire new people to help you build your business as large and as effective as possible. And we will tell you how to build profitably. The first time I thought about starting a business was in college. I started a business in South Texas while going to school in Oklahoma City. Now think about this, it's nine hours away. So I started the business over the summer. The summer was a time in which I could build for two and a half to three months and be able to see if it was sustainable while I went away to school. So I started one summer going door to door to door, selling services to businesses. This is the predecessor to our current real estate companies. The predecessor was able to build a client base over the first two and a half months. You have to go door to door in order to understand how to build relationships from scratch. And this is probably the key attribute of a new leader. So you have to learn how to sell. You have to learn how to cold call. You have to learn how to get out there and put yourself out there and to face failure. If you're scared of failure, if you're scared of looking bad, you're not going to be a viable business leader in the long term. So we grew the business the first three months and I went away to school. I spent a year and a half driving on Thursday nights after school, after classes in Oklahoma City, the nine hours down in South Texas. Fridays, I went around and saw clients. Saturdays, I trained staff. And Sundays, I drew the nine hours back to Oklahoma City. I did this every weekend for approximately a year and a half. It was very, very tough, but I was able to do it. About three years later, I was able to bring over my dad, who I love, uh, from a competitor. And he was able to help us build a great and a world-class quality control system, quality control program that took us to the next step. Fast forward, when I was 26, we had just hired our 400th W2 employee that year. As a 26 year old, I was running this thing inside of a Starbucks. This meant that I was running it all by myself, running the payroll, running the quality programs. We had some supervisors, some management, but we did not have a management team. So then I had to learn how to build a management team, build an infrastructure around this. This is the key thing for building a team. You must do it in order and in proper order and look for people who align with your values. And so the first thing is we had to get up to 50 employees. And the first thing about 50 employees is that you need to do it all your own. You need to do it all on your own and understand how every facet of the business works. You must not only learn how to sell, you must learn about how payroll works, how accounting works, understand how finance work, understand why the banks will or will not approve you for a small business loan, understand why clients will and will not take you on long term and understand why you're able to recruit employees or not recruit employees. And this all gets back to the idea of selling yourself, selling perspective, selling your specialization, your knowledge. So as you build your first 50 employees, what I want you to do is I want you to spend half your time in sales and half your time in quality control. These two things. Now, as you think about these two things, you're thinking to yourself, well, okay, so I spent four hours a day in sales, I spent four hours a day in quality control. No, you're an entrepreneur, more is expected of you. You are a leader, more is expected of you. Do not start a business unless you're prepared to commit at least 12 to 16 hours a day, five days a week for at least the first decade. If you're only gonna commit eight hours a day, this is not for you. You are not cut out to be a leader. You're not cut out to be an entrepreneur if you're only committed to working nine, or eight or 10 hours a day. It takes 12 hours to 16 hours a day, five days a week. Now, if you're a Jew or a Christian, you're commanded to work six days a week, not five days a week. So I'll leave that up to you about how many days a week you wanna work. But I can tell you from experience, it takes 12 to 16 hours a day for at least a decade to at least start to build something that has a remote potential to become something great in the long term. And so as we built the business up, we realized that we need to focus on these two things. And so as you're moving from 50 employees up to 100 employees, it's necessary for you to begin to professionalize the organization. This is where you're gonna hire your two key management team members, your CFO and your chief operating officer. Now, for the CFO, I want you to hire someone that is ready to take you and has done work for a company two to three times your size. So you're thinking 200 to 300 employee companies in the past, maybe even a little bit larger. You wanna hire for competency and outside competency from the outset because it's very, very tough to switch CFOs. The second person you're gonna hire is a chief operating officer to run the day-to-day -day business. This may look like a secondary type of position within your organization. If you're a brokerage firm, it might be your broker of record. If you're an investment firm, it might be your chief investment officer. It may be a managing director if you're a law firm, but it'll be someone like that that has the clout and the title to be able to effectuate 
the strategy within the organization for you while you focus on building the systems and the processes behind the organization and driving the leadership of the organization. Remember the role of a CEO, the role of a chief executive in any organization, a managing director and executive director is to be the bridge between the outside of the organization and the inside of the organization. You must focus your time and divide your time, therefore the same way. 50% outside focus, 50% inward focus as you grow up to 100 and beyond. Now, as we begin to think about what it takes to grow an organization, We've spoken about sales and quality control. We've spoken about between 50 to 100 employees you professionalize, which means you find people to run the sales, find people to run the quality control, hire chief financial officer, hire your chief operating officer, or whatever derivative title is necessary and proper for your organization. And you take it from there. And I can tell you from experience, one thing that happens is that the government interferes in your business more than you could possibly ever imagine. You see, sometime around the period where we had around 400 employees, there was a guy that got into the White House who decided he was gonna penalize every business over 50 employees by making them buy healthcare insurance for all the employees. And so this is the employee that I like to call the $600,000 employee. This 50th or 51st employee will cost your organization $600,000 a year. And so for most of you, it will be untenable. It will be unsustainable financially for you to be able to get this. And so from my perspective, we decided to take it all the way down. We downsourced, we outsourced all the way down to hundred employees, then eventually down to 50 employees and sub 50. And so for us, we insource the competency, we outsource the monotony and the systems work. Anything you can processize, you put this on the outside of your organization, you insource all the competency as you're able to. So outsource as much as possible to be able to get and maintain under 50. As you start to approach 50 employees again, you hear this number of times, outsource, 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 and keep the headcount short. This provides you a secondary benefit besides the $600,000 expense that comes with that 50th or the 51st employee, and that is simplicity of life and simplicity of management. The fewer the headcount, the better. As someone who's managed organizations very, very small, up to 50 employees, and has managed organizations and had executive or chairman responsibilities of organizations over 2,000, I can tell you that the profitability between 50 and 1,000, depending on your line of work, if you've outsourced correctly, is not that different. And the headaches of managing 900 employees are far worse than managing 45 employees. So I can tell you, unless you think that your business model will be able to grow to way over a thousand employees, it's best to say under 50 employees. Let me repeat that. Unless you're sure that you can grow to over a thousand employees, it's best for you to stay under 50 employees. Now, the ability for us to be able to think about that and conceptualize that in advance whenever you've got one, two, five, ten employees at that stamp right now is to be able to get out ahead of it and think about what your model will look like. This means you're having a very, very high-end, high-caliber amount of people. You're going to have a lot of people that are executives, people that are MBAs, people that are very, very good at relationship development, and you're going to outsource everything else that you possibly can. The other thing that you have to be thinking about around this time, whenever you go from 25 to around 75, this is sort of the bridge period to be able to get up to your 100, is you're thinking about marketing, you're thinking about branding. There's two different ways to think about this. Number one is does your brand a strong one that evokes strength and confidence or is a brand that is a commodity it's okay if it's a commodity it's not ideal but if you're a commodity you're gonna to have to work much much harder if you're Bob's brokerage service you're gonna have a very very difficult time standing out than if you're something of a higher quality brand and name and so you must focus on the systemization of your marketing and if you focus on the systemization of your marketing that'll help propel you to grow Revenues is what it takes to require and acquire and require the operations of businesses. Now, I told you at the very, very beginning that I would tell you the secret to hiring the best team members possible. And this is it. Whenever you interview, whenever you interview, always ask questions about their past. And within their answers, look for a singular characteristic, and that's this, proactive engagement. Proactive engagement is the one key this is the one indicator of whether a person can be self-managed or if they're going to, have to be micromanaged and managed in a way that will eat up energy and eat up your organization's resources. You do not need someone that has to be managed on a day-in, day-out basis. You need someone that's going to be proactively engaged to do the work, to be able to anticipate the problems of the future today and to be able to be responsible enough to go out there 
and fix problems well without having to be asked. This is the number one most important thing for a new organization to understand is it's all about the people that you build, the people that you hire, the people that you build. And if you find someone that comes on your team who's not a cultural fit, I'll use the phrase of the great Dave Ramsey who said, you must be slow to hire and quick to fire. Slow to hire, quick to fire whenever you find people that are not a good cultural alignment for you. Now, it's important that you you love, you take care of your people, you take care of them as an extended family, you build that trust, you build that generosity with them because that's how you would hope that they would treat one another, especially in your absence. But you must find people that are a cultural fit within the type of organization you're gonna build. And you as leaders of small organizations have this opportunity right now to start fresh and start building a culture that's one that you would hope to see and you'd hope to be able to live to your kids and your grandkids, a culture and a legacy of proactive engagement, of responsibility, and one of the highest integrity possible as these organizations grow from zero to 100. If you click above, I'll give you an idea about how to build a one-page business plan. And if you click below, we'll also give you an idea about how to become a leader through the leadership playlist. Thanks a lot.